Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments. Every Friday, Lord willing, at 3 o'clock Central Time, uh, we'll be having this little get-together. Uh, I enjoy being with you. I hope, I hope it's a blessing. I hope you're learning some things that will be of help to you. So, Ministry Moments, YouTube, you can go on and subscribe there. That way we have our own channel. Uh, under Solve Church Problems YouTube. You can find Ministry Moments YouTube and you sign up. This way every Friday, Lord willing, you'll receive this broadcast and and we're here to try to encourage you and to keep on doing what's right. I know this COVID-19 has been tough on you, but it's time to get back in the saddle, time to get back at it again. And so I hope that I'll be able to help. Here's what I want to do today. I want to talk to you today about mentors. Those who are our, who mentored us are in heaven now, and uh, oh, don't we miss them though? Lester Roloff, some nine times I either spoke with him or for him or he for me. Dr. Lee Robertson loved having him come every year. Then uh, Dr. Carl Hatch, probably one of the greatest soul winners I've ever known in heaven now. Dr. Hiles, what can you say? A composite of all those great men. And John R. Rice, if you ever go to uh, on YouTube, you'll see the sermon he preaching in Columbus, Ohio, on You Must Be Born Again. And you'll see a picture of Mrs. Gray and I sitting next to Mrs. Rice. She invited us to sit with her during that conference. And well, what a thrill that was. That was an amazing thrill. And she spoke for us, I guess, some seven different times throughout the years up north and down south. And what a tremendous uh, lady. And uh, on and on I could go over it. just tell you about John Rawlings, uh, great men, Bill Rice, all those men that were part of the mentoring phase of my life, my ministry, and what we've been able to do through the years. And we're very grateful for it. But I'm going to talk to you about mentors. And I want you to listen carefully. And I think maybe we'll, maybe we can just discover something that might be of help to us today. Hebrews chapter 13, if you will, verses 7 and 8 is where we'll start. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 says this, Remember them which have the rule over you. Now hold it. The word rule doesn't mean like a dictator or a tyrannical leader. The word rule, the English word, just simply means lead. It simply means lead. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. So first thing's introduced here, it's somebody that has the lead on us. Some has been further down, the brother house had 20 plus years on me. I could have never caught him, never caught him. And he's in heaven now. And I'm at the age where he, he passed away, went to heaven, died, went to heaven, promoted to heaven. But I'll never get to where he was. I read his books and I just, I just go, wow. Oh, how God had his hand on that man. But remember them, the word remember, English word for salute. Uh, remember them which have the rule or the lead over you. Who have spoken to you the word of God. So they've, they've not vacillated on the New King James or the English version or whatever. No, they, they just, the, the word visa in the English is a definite article, which means there's only one word of God. There's not two, there's not three, not, not four. Uh, don't say this is a better translation than this because we just have simply the word of God. Then it says this, whose faith follow? What were they following? They were following the word of God. All right. Remember them which have the rule over you, those who have been uh, long, down the road longer than you, who have spoken to you the word of God, based on the word of God, whose faith follow, their faith in the word of God. Then it says this, listen to this, considering the end of their conversation. The English word conversation is not just talk, but it's walk. Walk and talk. So he said this, I want you to salute those who have the lead on you. Just salute them. Just salute them. God bless them. If you're in town, the church across town is doing more than you're doing, and they're solid on the word of God, and, and they're fundamental in King James only, don't get mad at them. Salute them. Remember them which have the rule over you, lead over you, who have spoken unto you, who have, that's, that's uh, he, he's past tense, the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. So we look and we see where they're going. We consider, big consideration. What's the end of this? 
how is this going to end up? Uh, loose standards in leadership will lead to loose standards in the, in the families in the church. You provide strong leadership, they'll respond to it. I've said this before, a leader jumps 10 feet, the people will jump five. All right, then in verse eight, the scripture says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the emerging church crowd comes along and says, many skirts, okay. Uh, skinny jeans, okay. A worldly beat with the music, it's, it's okay. But wait a minute, Jesus hadn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So emerging, just that very word tells you something's wrong. Something's not right. All right. So let me, let's talk about mentors. Number one, we stand on their shoulders. We stand on their shoulders. I, I could not, if it had not been, I've, I went to a sword conference in 1972, Dr. John Rice, Dr. Jack Hiles, Grace Baptist Church. And uh, oh my goodness. You talking about the power of God. I sat on the front row, astounded. I cried, I laughed, and I cried, and I laughed, and I cried. And then I hit the altar and said, oh, God, use me. God, use me. And I determined I was going to allow those men to influence me because I was considering the end, and I was considering their faith in the Word of God. They never wavered. Uh, they, they knew exactly where they were going. They went from point A to point B. And I happened to step in. They had 20 years on me, 20 years plus, but that was all right. I knew where they were going, and, and I wanted to make sure they influenced me so that I could get to where they are going. Uh, Babe Ruth had a batting coach. Tiger Woods had a golf coach. He should have had a marriage coach, but he had a golf coach. I, I don't care who you are. There's somebody who's been further down the road than you have who can help you. So number one, we stand on their shoulders. Number two, they paved the way by faith in the word of God. They paved the way by faith in the word of God. Now take your Bible and turn to Hebrews 11, 1, and here's what it says. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So now faith is, present tense, faith tells me what God has done. My faith now tells me what God will do. So I'm going to have faith in the same God, the same word of God, even though I was not there when the Red Sea was parted. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I wasn't there when the worlds were created. That's what the chapter of Hebrews 11 points out. I wasn't there. But now today, by faith, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. I also believe what God's going to do. I believe in what God's going to do. Now, now faith is, if you could picture a box of Kleenex, you take a Kleenex out and you use it, you don't put it back in the box. Now you've got another one. So faith, that's the way every day is with faith. You take out today, tomorrow, you've got reaching. It's fresh. Now faith is. So I said, number one, we stand on our mentor's shoulders Number two, they paved the way by faith in the word of God. Now faith is. I believe what he has done. I believe what he's going to do. Number three, we are a composite of those who preceded us. We, I, I, I have a, a, a little John Rice in me. I have a little of Jack Isles in me, a little of Lee Robertson in me, a little of Lester Roloff in me, and Bill Rice in me, B.R. Lakin in me. Um, and Mr. Lincoln said to me at lunch one day, he said, son, if they're nipping at your heels, it means you got the lead on them. Um, great, great men, great men. And so they, I have become now a composite. You ought to get Dr. Howe's book on the great men I have known. And you'll see the influence that all of those men that preceded him had in him. You and I are a, a beneficiaries of those who went before us by faith in the word of God. They did things that I remember when John Rice came out in the sword, it's challenged churches, 200 baptisms this year, 200 baptisms this year. And I remember the emphasis. I also remember uh, it, where it said, brother house baptized 540 in one year. Now he went on to baptize 15,000 a year, but I remember when the sword said 540. And that challenge of 200, oh, did it ever work? And it, preachers took it seriously. 
um, don't tell me how many you haven't saved you're not, if, if they're not getting baptized. I'm not saying baptism for salvation, but I'm saying they've got to get them to grow. If you, baptism is the numerical number that will tell off on you. <laughs> how many people you getting saved and how many people you got for Sunday school? It'll tell off on you. So number one, we stand on their shoulders. And I don't trust a man who will publicly show admiration and privately decry, uh, scandalize, talk bad about. I, I, don't, I don't trust that. I can name you a, a, a so-called leader of our day. When I sat down to eat with him, first thing he did was start in on Brother Hiles. And that was the first, it was over for me. Over. I don't care how big, big he builds a church because it's because there's a deficiency somewhere. He's mad about something. Maybe about the fact his wife wears britches. I don't know. It may be. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what. Maybe it's the music. I don't know. But boy, there's something that's irritating the fire out of him. And he, he never could pass up Brother Isles. He never could get past him. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Never do it. But he used uh, that uh, as a burr under his saddle. So I don't know why I got off on that. But I feel better. <laughs> Number one, we stand on their shoulders. Number two, they paved the way by faith in the word of God. Number three, we are a composite of those who preceded us. A contemporary, you can only walk, the contemporary and you are walk, walking like this. That's, that's how you're walking. And you can't go any further, and he can't go any further than what he's done. But these others have a lifetime of work. And, and by the way, most of them have put it in print. You can read it if you want to and see what, what has uh, occurred in their life of God's hands on them. Number one, we stand on their shoulders. Number two, they paved the way by faith in the word of God. Number three, we're a composite of those who precede us. Number four, choose carefully whom you allow to influence you. Choose carefully whom you allow to influence you. Do not quickly choose someone uh, to have influence on you without you thinking about it. Can I give you a scripture? Here we go. Philippians 3, jot this down. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Now listen carefully. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Listen to this now. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth of those things which are before. Now, let me cost, slow down a little bit. Slow down a little bit. We read scripture too quickly, one thing, and we draw a conclusion too quickly. Listen to this. Brethren, here's what he said. I count not myself. I'm apprehended. I've not, I've not arrived. Watch this. But the one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Now, I stand here. Uh, I stand here. Behind me are the young people. They have absolutely nothing to offer me. Don't leave me now. Forgetting those things which are behind. So what are we doing in our day? Here we are, and we're, we're letting the young people. That's what the riots are all over this nation right now. That's why we have the rebellion, the emerging church. And I have emails from young men who went to, to Howells Anderson College. And when they started wavering on the word of God, he blistered me constantly with emails. I saved them all. I saved every one of them. Now, he was doing everything he could to get me to change my position on the King James Bible. Watch this. Here I am, and here are the, are the ones that are behind me. Here's, okay, here's Jack Hiles. Here's Bob Gray. I am behind him. All right? Now, watch it. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, watch it, and reaching forth into those things which are before. So here I am. I'm not going to look back to the young generation to get what I need. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look to the ones who've preceded me. I'm going to look to the ones who, 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 who by faith, they've got there's, there's this gap here. And they, they've gone oh, like this. Well, I'm going to go like this. I'm not going to follow the youngsters. I'm not going to follow the contemporaries. I'm not going to do it. And we are in a day where we've just lost honor for those who, you, you don't have honor. If you talk to you, I never talked to my daddy as, as wrong as he was with God. I never talked to my daddy the way some of you talk to your, dad, your daddy. I never talked to my mama the way that some of you treat your mama. Never, never. Now, I'm simply saying the scripture says, forgetting those things which are behind. Forget about the, don't let the youngsters influence you. You forget about that. Then what am I going to do? Reaching forth under those things 
which are before. Now watch what he said in mean, verse 14, he proves it. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ preceded Paul. You got it? I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So I'm looking ahead by looking at those who preceded me. I'm not looking at the ones who are behind me. I'm looking at the ones who've gone before me. You got it? All right. I said, number one, we stand on their shoulders. I'm talking about mentors and influence. They paved the way by faith in the word of God. Number three, we are composite of those who preceded us. A contemporary can only take you as far as you and him are. He can't take you any further than that. But people who, pre, who have gone on before us, they can. All right? Number four, choose carefully whom you allow to influence you. Those who have gone before you, whose faith followed, considering the end of their conversation, <coughs> not the youngsters behind you. They, they, if they start offering you this uh, emerging church music, turn them down. You, forget it. Stick with uh, uh, John Rice music. Stick with Bill Rice music. Stick with Jack Hiles music, Lee Robertson music. Stick with that. Stick with that. All right, you got it? So number one, we stand on their shoulders. Talk about mentor. Number two, they paved the way by faith in the word of God. Number three, we are a composite of those who preceded us. Number four, choose carefully whom you allow to influence you. It's a matter of influence. You be very, very careful. You make sure it's the ones who've gone before you that influence you. All right, number five, check the direction before choosing. <clears throat> I'll give you this illustration. I've used it all over the country. But I was an American Baptist denomination. And then I went to sword conference and I said, oh my goodness, I, this, I know what, what the Bible says and I've, I've, I've got to choose those who are going to influence me. Here's what I did. Took my whole family and went to Jerry Falwell's. <clears throat> we pulled up in the parking lot and, and there was a janitor there. If you want to find out something about a church, just talk to the janitor. <laughs> He'll tell you everything. And I looked up in the back. I'm trying to decide now. I'm trying to decide. Where am I going to go? I want to be influenced. And in those days, you'd have to understand Jerry Fall, what was known as the, uh, the star of the fundamental Baptist movement. I mean, I'm just telling you, it was not like you know now. I'm talking about way back yonder, buddy. It was, it was a soul-winning outfit. I looked up, and there was a bunch of girls in shorts coming out of the building back there, and the first one standing there had a basketball in her hand. And I said to the, uh, to the, to the janitor, what, what is that? He said, well, what? It's a basketball team, girl, basketball team. He said, what's the matter? Can't you see the basketball? I said, not for the shorts. <laughs> so I, and they had canned music. And I, I, I said, no, this is not, this is not what I believe. I believe in character and I believe in hard work and discipline. I, so I said, this is not for me. I went to another church, a very influential fundamental church, and they did not have Sunday school. They had a unified service. And I remember sitting in the back. Oh, great church, great church, great pastor. I, we were we were buddies. I, after I got in to go on, we preached together. So when he loved me, and I loved him. But I sat there and I said, "No, we don't need less Bible. We need more Bible." So if I come here, I'll end up pastoring a church with a unified service. His wife led the music, which is fine. But I asked my wife; she could do that. She said, "No." So I struck Jerry Falwell off the list. I struck this other one off the list. Then I went to hear Brother Hiles rant and rave and scream and holler and tell people to sit up and shut up. And oh, my goodness, the power of God was there. Oh, the power of God was there. Then I, I saw what he was producing. And I said, man, that's what I, that's what I want. I believe that's as close to the Bible as I, I can get in this, this time, in the seven, early 70s. I believe it's early, as close as I can get. So I chose then carefully someone I because if they influenced me I would end up down the road like them number one we stand on their shoulders number two they paved the way by faith in the word of God number three they're a composite of those who preceded us number four choose carefully whom you allow to influence you number five check the direction before choosing number six no need to reinvent the wheel no need last point there are no divine there are divine methods as well as a divine message. One leader who waned towards the end of fundamentalism got and preached a whole sermon against methods. 
He says, there's no such thing as divine methods, but it's just a divine message. Well, boy, that leaves the door open for an awful lot of junk. No, it's a divine method. Two by twos in the word of God. Going person to person with the word of God, that's Bible. That's Bible. Baptizing on the same day, that's Bible. Um, growth through soul winning and baptism, yeah, it's, it's Bible. All right, so talk about mentors. Number one, we stand on their shoulders. Number two, they paved the way by faith in the word of God. Number three, we are composite of those who preceded us. Number four, choose carefully whom you allow to influence you. Be, be very careful. Don't allow someone in a private conversation to run down Jack Hiles or Lee Robertson or Lester Roloff. Or those. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Have enough character. To, don't, 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 don't allow it to happen. Number five, check the direction before choosing. Number six, no need to reinvent the wheel. Bus ministry worked back then to work now. You're just lazy. That's all you are. And uh, if, if the pastors in, our, in America go so way, the people would go so way. If the pastors would bring Congress to church, then the people would. Don't cut back on the bus. You cut back. Oh, the gas is so, it's not now. It's not expensive now. And so, no, 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 no. Bus ministry was a, but the greatest tools of that generation and is being vacated now by this generation. Shame on you. Shame on you. You'll have to have to compromise to get it any other way except via just hard work. So no need to reinvent the wheel. There, there are divine methods as well as the divine message. I hope this helps you. Ministry moments every Friday, 3 o'clock Central Time. Sorry I went so long today, but a uh, little, little long-winded, huh? But you be, you be with us next, uh, come and be and join us next Friday, 3 o'clock Central Time. Uh, Solve Church Problems YouTube. Go to Ministry Moments YouTube and subscribe, and you'll get it every, and it'll be Facebook Live. You'll get it every week, Friday, 3 o'clock Central Time. Oh, have a great weekend. So time to kick it in the rear and get her going again. COVID or no COVID. Pandemic doesn't mean that hell has lost a degree of heat. Uh, people still dying and going to hell. So have a great weekend. Win folks to Christ. Get people saved and get them to church.